Good evening, Rowan. It's the 27th of July, 2018, and it's about 1am. And obviously this is my usual Friday evening video, being recorded in the early hours of Friday morning, to reassure you that I won't be seducing any priests over the weekend. <laughs> I won't be hanging round the Catholic parish of St Urban's, hoping to bump into any pretend astrophysicists in order to save your skin, and I won't be coming out as a lesbian either in order to save your gigantic ego. So everything is exactly the same as usual. Nothing ever changes. <laughs> anyway, I thought we could carry on our chat about the dialogue that you were in with Anthony Gormley on the 5th of July 2018. And you're referring to one of his sculptures, um in the section of the dialogue that I'm talking about this evening. I think it was called New Encounters or something like that, but there were 31 uh, metal replicas of his body placed around London. Uh, they've also been placed in other places as well, um, but it's London that you're talking about, about um, tourists seeing one on um, Waterloo Bridge, um, so you don't refer to that, but one of the other people refers to it earlier on. So this is what you're talking about when you're talking about encountering a body. It's supposed to be encountering this metal body, this sculpture on Waterloo Bridge um, and how people felt. It's a naked body. It's up there on the screen anyway. You can see it. That's what you're talking about, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Anyway, so you like talking about bodies, don't you, and nakedness and that kind of thing. It does feature um, in your, uh, I don't even know what to call it, monologue, dialogue, rhetoric. You do seem to refer a lot to bodies and nakedness and being stripped and all this kind of thing. It's all a bit perverse. <laughs> so anyway, you're in your element here talking about this body. <laughs> So you say, this is in relation to a question, um, I think from the audience, I've forgotten now, it's that long since I wrote this down, well earlier today, uh, since I wrote down this transcript, uh, but you refer to a question anyway, so you say, and your question about the theological dimension prompted me to think about the strange fact, <laughs> I don't know why this is a strange fact, <laughs> But anyway, your question about the theological dimension prompted me to think about the strange fact that for most of Western history, um, one of the central images has been of a wounded, vulnerable and naked human body. <laughs> this is so funny. It's a, a funny way um, of talking about the crucifix, really, to be focusing on those elements and uh, not talking about redemption or salvation or anything like that, just talking about um, a wounded, vulnerable and naked human body. Uh, you're trying to bring it into the material, aren't you? So um, the crucifix has a significance in uh, the spiritual world, in eternity, in relation to redemption and salvation and you are simply trying to bring it into the temporal by referring to it in these material terms. Uh, so that's quite interesting as well. You do do that quite a lot. I think I've mentioned that before, um, how you do try to bring the, spir the spiritual into the material. Not that the two aren't related to each other, but you seem to emphasise this to the detriment of that other dimension of it, that of eternity and salvation and God being transcendent. I think when you talk in this way, um, it represents a denial of the spiritual realm of eternity and this is a promotion of the goal of the New World Order to bring about a one world religion of environmentalism and earth worship. So we need to bring everything into the material. 
<laughs> and there is no eternity. We're just part of the earth and the earth is our mother and we can't scratch the surface of the earth. And I think this is the thrust where everything is heading, um, this denial of the spiritual implication of the crucifix. You're just talking about it in material terms. <laughs> So it's a funny way to talk about it, a wounded, vulnerable and naked human body. Um, so this is a strange fact that for most of Western history, well, for 2,000 years, that isn't most of Western history, is it? Because there was history before that, a long time before that as well. Um, so it's not most of Western history. Uh, so for most of Western history... One of the central images has been of a wounded, vulnerable and naked human body as if in all sorts of different buildings and structures and contexts of meaning and activity our attention has been very, very quietly but very obstinately directed back to that as a place we can't escape from. Um, so that's quite interesting that you seem to think that you're presented with a crucifix and that's a place that you can't escape from. Um, because if you're a Christian, the crucifix or the the cross of Christ anyway, uh, the death of Christ on the cross, it's not a place you want to escape from, but rather a place you want to escape to. <laughs> so it's funny that you see it as something that you need to escape from. Satan needs to escape from the cross as well, uh, which brings about the defeat um, of him, of Satan, and the salvation of humankind, of those um, who don't reject Christ, like you, <laughs> rejected Christ. Um, so, that's quite interesting, really, that you talk about the crucifix in this way. Um, the image of a wounded, vulnerable and naked human body, and as being something that you can't escape from, well, why would you wanting to escape from it if you're supposed to be a Christian. That's quite strange, really. So, <laughs> so um, our attention has been very, very quietly and very obstinately directed back to that as a place we can't escape from, the vulnerability of a body in which, for a Christian, God has met us. So the way that you say this for a Christian, God has met us, that's quite strange as well. Um, for a Christian, God has met us. So this means, this crucifix, this wounded, vulnerable body, for a Christian, this means that God has met us. Um, but you say it in quite a strange way, like a Christian God has met us. So a Christian God has met us but not another God. Uh, so you're talking about a Christian God as if that were not related to you in any way whatsoever. So you want to escape from the cross of Christ and you talk about a Christian God as being some foreign entity from you. So you're giving away once again, I think, that you're not in fact a Christian. <laughs> You're devoted to Satan, you want to escape from the cross of Christ and you talk about the crucifix in purely material terms. Um, so you then say, when we are living, as Anthony says, in an environment where constantly, increasingly dealing with man-made structures and products. Uh, there's some other talk in this dialogue, by the way, I'm just interjecting this, about the fact that the majority of people live in cities, and that's due to increase in the future. So this is what you're referring to here. So we are living, as Anthony says, in an environment where constantly, increasingly dealing with man-made structures, products, we're dealing with geometries. Um, you're talking about the Masonic symbol there, aren't you? The G and um, the compasses, the Masonic symbols. So we're dealing with man-made structures, products. We're dealing with geometries. How does that... What's the contemporary equivalent of having the crucifix in every room? 
Well, the contemporary equivalent of having the crucifix in every room is having the television in every room. So instead of looking at a symbol of Christianity, uh, you are been constantly fed with globalist propaganda through the television. So that's the contemporary equivalent of having a crucifix in every room, having a television in every room. So what's the contemporary equivalent of being reconnected with that inescapable materiality? <laughs> So, the inescapable for you is that you're not going to get the outcome that you want from this situation, no matter what lengths you go to <laughs> in employing sophistry. Uh, you th I think you think of yourself as a kind of sorcerer, don't you? I may have mentioned this before, maybe not in these terms. I can't remember now. It's getting quite late. <laughs> And I'm wanting to be going to sleep to be dreaming about my beloved as soon as I can. Um, but you seem to employ words like you think they're going to if affect um, the material world. Like you only have to say something and it becomes real. So you're imagining, you're speaking, creates reality. Except it's not reality, it's merely your imagination. <laughs> And I'm not going to be swayed by anything that you say or do. <laughs> so what's the contemporary equivalent of being reconnected? So we're not being reconnected, and I'm not being reconnected with any perverted pretend astrophysicists either. Um, so you've got an inescapable materiality <laughs> or reality in this sense. What's the contemporary equivalent of being reconnected with that inescapable Materiality which grows, which decays, which suffers, which weeps, which eats and makes love and all the rest of it. Well, you don't make love, Rowan. You screw. <laughs> and you'll screw anything that moves. <laughs> you just use other people to masturbate with um, because you don't have any concept of other human beings having an identity and rights and that kind of thing. You speak about it because you know it sounds good to other people. Um, but as I've mentioned many times before, you're a psychopath and other people are simply objects in your environment and you judge them based on whether they're useful to you or obstructive to you. Um, so you don't make love. You're incapable of such a thing. Um, you're not even capable of fornication, you're only capable of masturbation and you use other people's bodies to masturbate with and you're not using mine, you sleazy old pervert. <laughs> um, so, this inescapable materiality which grows, which decay decays, uh, which suffers, which weeps, which eats and makes love, and all the rest of it. And then you leave a pause and you say, and which dies. Um, so I don't know if you're alluding to your intention, your probable intention to pop your cyanide pill, um, if you can't escape the inevitable outcome, um, which will result from the fact that I'm not giving you what you want. And your words don't, in fact have the power to influence reality. <laughs> so you then say, um, so I think there is a theological way of looking at that too, and the surprise encounter, you start sounding really weird when you're saying this, I have to say, and the surprise of encounter, you're talking astrophysically, aren't you? Um, close encounters of the third kind. So I think there is a theological way of looking at that too, and the surprise encounter, which has been so well described, the surprise of encountering an image of a body. The way that you say body, it makes it sound like you're talking about a dead body. The surprise of encountering an image of a body where, where you're not expecting it. A body which is questioning you as bodies do. I mean, that's just complete nonsense. Bodies questioning you as bodies do. You're utterly insane. <laughs> this is more jabberwocky. <laughs> I 
I think um, you may be issuing death threats to me as well. <laughs> well, go ahead. What are you threatening me with? Heaven. <laughs> and how many million times have you done that before anyway? And where did it get you? Nowhere. A body which is questioning you as bodies do. There's, a, you know, there's a real spiritual um, trigger of some sort here. This is what makes me think um, you're issuing me with a death threat. <laughs> Why don't you just get on with it, mummy's boy? <laughs> Come on, bring it on. <laughs> I wish you would kill me. It'd be a relief. <laughs> Anyway, that's as far as I'm going in this dialogue this evening because obviously I shall be going to sleep as soon as I can. I'm not even sure if I'm going to compile and upload this video this evening because I'm very tired. I've been quite busy today and um, as I've said, I need to be dreaming about my beloved and his magnificent feet and how we just can't wait to be together on our bed of roses, on our silk sheets, having a really good time in each other's arms resisting tyrannous authorities and of course your wife will be doing exactly the same with her hot sexy Rastafarian boyfriend the moment that you're out of the picture but before all of that I shall be turning up to make a citizen's arrest for terrorism so don't forget to be alert and of course I've still got those awkward questions up my sleeve to be asking you. Hasta la próxima! And your question about the, the theological dimension. Um. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into... The Twilight Zone. And your question about the, the theological dimension um, prompted me to think about the strange fact that for most of Western history, one of the central images has been of a wounded, naked, and vulnerable human body. As if in all sorts of different buildings and structures and contexts of meaning and activity, our attention has been very, very quietly but very obstinately directed back to that as a place we can't escape from. I know dark clouds. attention has been very, very quietly but very obstinately directed back to that as a place we can't escape from, the vulnerability of a body in which, for a Christian, God has met us. I'm going there to see my Jesus. He said he'd meet me when I come. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm just going over home. The vulnerability of a body in which, for a Christian, God has met us. When we are living, as Anthony says, in an environment where we're constantly, increasingly dealing with 
man-made structures products when dealing with geometries. <laughs> constantly, increasingly dealing with man-made structures products when dealing with geometries. How does that, what, what's the contemporary equivalent of having the crucifix in every room? You feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. You trust me and what I say. The government love you. The government cares for you. Watch the television. This is the truth. Criminals and terrorists want to kill you. The government will save you. The police will save you. We need to go to war to protect you. We are here to look after you. Conspiracy theorists are insane and dangerous. Be fearful. You are small and weak. The government is strong. We will look after you. Obey. You must obey. You feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. This is the truth. The truth. The truth. You are fearful, fearful. You do not like music. You do not like people who smoke. You do not like people who try to tell you things that are bad about your government. These people are dangerous. They are not to be trusted. Take your vaccine or swine flu will kill you. We care. You feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. The electro frequency 2094, targeting the United States at 72 Hz, and the European continent at a slightly lower 68. The rest of us, and the standard frequency. What's the contemporary equivalent of having the crucifix in every room? What's the contemporary equivalent of being reconnected with that inescapable materiality? Now he's a nasty sort of person They gave him time No thank Inescapable materiality Which grows, which decays, which suffers Which weeps Which eats and makes love And all the rest of it Sex with strangers behind your partner's back is exciting. Your partner is boring. Your partner is cheating on you. Does not love you. You are worthless and not worthy of being loved at all. You feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. Which eats and makes love and all the rest of it. And which, which dies. I got my papers. inescapable materiality, which grows, which decays, which suffers, which weeps, which eats and makes love, and all the rest of it, and which, which dies. Um, so I think there is, there is a, a theological way of looking at that too, and the surprise of encountering, which has been so well described, the surprise of encountering. Ground the surprise of encountering an image of a body where you're not expecting it. A body which is questioning you as, as bodies do. I talk a lot of shit and practice what I preach. A body which is questioning you as as bodies do. I think there's a you know a real spiritual um, trigger of some sort there. That he'd meet me when I come. I'm 
I'm only going over Jordan. I'm just going over home. She's got both hands, she's got both hands. And late that night when the Lord came home inquiring of his lady O The servant said on every hand she's gone with the raggle tackle gypsies O The footman never lies the number but the prince still holds both the slippers and would you leave a prince for a bed sitch and cats of retails? Sex. Hello, dear. Oh, what care I for my house and my land? What care I for my money? Oh, I'd rather have a kiss from the wild gypsies' lips. I'm away with the raggle taggle gypsies. I'm away with the raggle taggle gypsies. I'm away with the raggle taggle gypsies.